What's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna talk about if you should hire a real estate agent or if you should go out and get your own real estate license. Welcome back everyone. Uh, so getting your real estate license, uh, should you get it or should you hire a real estate agent? Um, that all depends on what your goals are and uh, where you are in your real estate experience. Uh, my first introduction to real estate was actually getting my real estate license. Uh, I decided I wanted to flip houses and I wanted to have my own real estate brokerage. Um, I ended up not doing either one of those and uh, switched uh, to Airbnbs and vacation rentals. Um, I did it for a little bit and I saw someone making a lot of money and actually enjoying what they were doing. Um, I wasn't really enjoying the, the whole uh, real estate brokerage thing. First, I wanted to talk about uh, the pros of getting your real estate license. Um, the first pro is you get to learn all the moving parts in a transaction. Um, what does that mean? Each state has different rules and laws when it comes to purchasing real estate and uh, when it comes to the contracts that are being used. Uh, there are very specific rules that exist and a certain order of things that has to happen in order to properly get a contract accepted and executed. Uh, getting your real estate license allows you to learn these rules so that you can be more strategic when it comes to putting a deal together and negotiating a contract. A second pro is being able to be very fast in submitting offers. Um, if you're investing in a hot market, and right now it seems like in 2021, everywhere is a hot market, uh, where there are multiple people putting in offers uh, on the same piece of property, then having your license will allow you to put in offers without having to deal with relaying your offer to an agent. Uh, in a hot market, uh, a day or even a couple hours can mean the difference between getting the property and losing it. Uh, a, good, a good example of this was recently I was looking at a piece of land uh, that was on the market for over a year um, and I was, I was using a land agent to help me purchase the land. Uh, I'll talk about uh, land, I'll talk more about land agents uh, in a few moments. I was interested uh, in putting in an offer, called my agent, he had some personal business to attend to uh, that day, so he put in an offer the next day. Uh, the offer was put in around like 5 p.m. Uh, the next day, and that same day, uh, someone put in an offer at, uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, we went into a multiple offer situation uh, where the seller asked for everyone to submit their highest and best offer, and uh, we ended up losing that piece of land. Um, if, if I would have put in the offer myself, um, I would have avoided that whole situation and more than likely would have had gotten the land. Um, out of all of the pros, I would say that having your license right now so that you can quickly submit offers um, is probably the most important one uh, in today's market. Um, the third pro is being able to have access to the MLS system. Now the MLS system is the multiple listing service. Um, every city and region has their own MLS. Uh, this is a system where most properties are listed and it's where websites like Zillow and Realtor.com pull their information from. Um, it's better and more detailed uh, than Zillow and having access uh, to the MLS allows you to look at the market whenever you want and uh, from this you can submit offers directly uh, to the agents who have listed the properties without having to wait for anyone. Um, so the last pro is having your own real estate license uh, allows you to take a commission on the land or property you're purchasing. Uh, the selling side of the transaction usually pays the commission. When you use an agent, uh, the agent is usually paid half commission from the selling side, um, which I didn't know when I first started. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, wh when you're representing yourself in the transaction, you get to either take the commission, the, the other half, apply the commission to the closing costs, or ask for the commission to be taken off the selling price, uh, which is another really cool thing, um, more of like an advanced thing you can do uh, if you had your license. Um, so those are, those are all the pros. Now for some of the cons uh, for getting a real estate license. The first con is if you're just starting out, it can be pretty expensive. Um, how expensive? 
Well, here in my state of North Carolina, I had to pay $500 for the pre-licensing course, which you have to pass, $100 to pay for the test for the license, $45 to activate your license, $600 to the National Association of Realtors, because for some reason, if you, you have to be part of the NAR, uh, at least here in North Carolina, to be able to have access to the MLS and about $600 a year to the MLS to maintain your access. I also had to pay about $250 uh, for onboarding at a real estate firm here and about $50 a month after that uh, to stay a part of a firm. Uh, you have to be part of a firm here, here in North Carolina to keep your license active if you're a new agent. And some states are very similar to that. Uh, so when everything's said and done, you're about $2,700 in. And for some people, that's a lot of money um, just to purchase a couple properties a year. Uh, in some areas of the country, you can buy a piece of land for $2,700, <laughs> which is crazy. Uh, the second pro is it takes time and a lot of studying to get your license. Uh, the pre-licensing course took me about 70 hours of in-class time. And that didn't include driving to and from the classroom and probably another 70-ish hours of studying. Uh, it's a lot of time. Um, I guarantee that you will not spend anywhere near that time putting together your first deal if you're using a real estate agent. The third con is only using your license once or twice a year after paying all that money and spending all that time. When you're first starting out, you will probably purchase only one or two pieces of land or properties a year. Uh, I bought my first piece of land and I didn't buy another uh, one for two years after that, about two years after that, yeah. Uh, we developed our first cabin the first year. The, the second year we started developing two more cabins uh, on the land and it wasn't until the third year uh, of building and managing vacation rentals when I bought my second piece of land. Uh, now if you're just buying multiple parcels, now if you're buying multiple parcels a year uh, and or purchasing already multiple already built homes uh, to turn into vacation rentals, it may make more sense to hold your license. But if you're only doing a couple or one a year, um, it might not make too much sense. So those are the cons. Uh, there aren't too many cons, but the cons that I just mentioned can outweigh the pros if you're not trying to spend too much money uh, and time on the front end. So now let's talk about some of the pros to hire a real estate agent. The first pro, uh, like I already mentioned briefly, is that it's free to hire a real estate agent. Since most agents are paid from the selling side, you're not losing anything by choosing to use a real estate agent on your first couple purchases. Um, and like I'm about to mention in a second, I actually recommend it. Um, the second pro is that you will be able to leverage the agent's experience and their contacts. Uh, I remember earlier this year when I wanted to purchase another piece of land to put four cabins on, um, I had an active real estate license but I still went out and found a real estate agent that specialized in purchasing and selling land. The reason I did this was to learn from him and uh, to be able to access uh, his contacts. Uh, he was able to get me in contact with a soil scientist and a landslide specialist who I use every time now I purchase a new piece of land. Um, I didn't even know those people existed, to be honest, until I talked to him. Um, his contacts and the small things he did to negotiate the contract when we purchased made me a better investor compared to if I would have tried to do the deal myself even when I had a real estate license. Uh, the third pro uh, to using an agent is simply it saves you time. It's, it's that simple. You're not spending all that time in the classroom. You're not spending all that time studying. Uh, you can focus on other parts of the deal like finalizing the construction budget if you're building or focusing on furnishing the home um, if you're purchasing. So. Yeah, um, the, those are the pros. The, the cons uh, for using an agent are the pros that uh, were mentioned on why you should uh, get your license. Um, it's pretty much that simple. Um, essentially, the biggest con is speed of ex executing contracts, like I already mentioned. No matter how good your agent is, it will always be slower to use an agent compared to if you were handling the deal yourself. Um, if you're in a very hot market where properties go under contract that same week, or even in some cases the same day that they hit the market, uh, it'll be up to you to decide if you're hiring an agent um, or if an ag hiring an agent is the best option for you. Now say that you've decided to hire an agent, 
The next question is, how do you find an agent? Um, do me a huge favor. Um, don't hire your friend that's an agent or just got their license. Same thing with a family member that just got their license. Don't, don't, don't hire a friend or family member and you feel obligated to get them their first deal. The reason being is I want you to find an agent that specializes in the type of property you're trying to buy. Not all agents are created equally, so don't go uh, to Google and type in best real estate agents in my city um, either because you might find a real estate agent that only specializes in luxury properties. And when you're just trying to purchase a piece of land, um, that might not work with using a luxury real estate agent compared to just purchasing a parcel. So the next part, uh, I'm gonna talk about how to find a land agent to help you find the right piece of land. And also if you're wanting to purchase a short-term rental and not build, how to find the right agent that specializes in helping clients to purchase vacation rentals. I cannot stress this enough, um, how important it is to find the right agent that specializes in the type of property you're looking to buy. And I've already repeated that twice. Um, because it's, it's so important for land agents, go to Google, type in land real estate agents in my area. Very simple. Uh, you'll get some results, scroll through and you'll see, uh, who has good reviews, go through their websites, uh, as well and see how well their websites are put together. Some people don't care, but I do judge an agent based off of the website. Um, after that, after you find a couple, email them and schedule a call with them. Uh, once you're on a call with them, tell them that you're looking to purchase some land in the next year and ask them uh, about some of their previous deals. What you want to hear, you want to hear that they've done land deals before um, and uh, that, they're, that they specifically deal in helping uh, uh, purchasing and selling land. Um, if you're looking to purchase a property instead of uh, building, then finding the right real estate agents that specialize in short-term rentals is also essential. Uh, no matter what any agent tells you, uh, this is different than finding a home that you or your family are going to live in. Um, it is also different than finding an agent that specializes in finding long-term investment properties. Um, long-term investment properties are properties that are leased out uh, to long-term tenants and it's exactly what we are not trying to do. The way I found this agent is first finding who are the top vacation rental managers in the area. If you're in a city that isn't really known for travel, uh, then think of a place that everyone travels to in your city um, to just get away. Then Google the rental management companies in that city, if that makes any sense. Um, these are cities that are about an hour or two away. A good example of this is Big Bear Lake, uh, California, uh, in California. So what you'll do is, uh, again, hop onto Google and find the top one to three managers uh, in your city that specialize in managing vacation rentals. Uh, from there, I want you to schedule a call again uh, with someone on their team, email them and tell them that you're looking for a company to eventually manage the rentals uh, that you buy or build. Ask them about their company um, and what their fees are. You might not have any plans to delegate the management of your properties, but at least you'll get a feel for what the companies in your area charge if you ever plan uh, to not manage your properties yourself, say if you, you move out of the city or something. Uh, once you get to the end of your conversation, I want you to ask those people from the management company which agent they recommend using to help you buy vacation rentals in your city. Um, they'll be more, more than likely they'll have someone they work with. Um, it's in their best interest to give you their contact, um, because it may lead to you doing business with them down the road. Uh, once you get the agent's contact info, I want you to email them again, schedule a call again, um, and ask them about how long they've been doing vacation rentals once you're on the phone with them. How the market currently looks is another good question to ask them. And then also the price ranges they recommend investing in. Uh, the reason being is they might not want to sell you a property that is, you're, you might be looking for a property that's like in the $200,000 range, but they only like to deal with making uh, vacation rentals in like the $500,000 range or the $700,000 range. Um, so that's important to know. Um, is also your price range with the, which the agent can help you with. Um, I love talking to vacation rental agents uh, that have been working in the city for a long time. 
um, because they will tell you the areas to avoid uh, that are specific to vacation rentals. Uh, you want to find an agent that will tell you if a property will do well if it's turned into a vacation rental. Um, the agent I found also makes recommendations on how to furnish the property and what to add to make the property rent better uh, on the short-term rental market. Um, that's invaluable information when it comes when you're looking at 50 plus properties over the course of a couple months. Now, what I recommend is actually starting without getting your license. Um, if you're ready to purchase a piece of land to develop or if you're ready to purchase um, an already built property, it might not be in your best interest to go through the headache of getting your license right now. When I first started, I went directly into getting my license because I thought I wanted to become a real estate agent and start my own brokerage firm. I quickly learned that's exactly what I didn't want to do. Um, and if I were to do it again, I would just focus on finding a good agent that specializes in the type of property I want to buy and then lean on them heavily uh, for, their market for their market knowledge. Um, if you're only purchasing one or two properties a year again, in my opinion, it's not worth it to get your license. Um, this year I purchased a three acre parcel, like I already mentioned, uh, to develop uh, four cabins on. I ended up using my land agent to help me with the deal. I've had my license for three years now and I still ended up using an agent uh, to help me with my purchase. At the end of the day, he structured the deal better than what I would have negotiated uh, with the seller uh, to the point that it saved me more money on the deal compared to if I would have just handled it myself uh, and taken a commission on the deal. So that's everything. Uh, no matter which route you decide to go with, uh, you're gonna have to deal with some give and take. If you're ready to own, start by finding the right agent uh, and go from there. I hope this video has helped uh, with identifying if you should find an agent or not and how to find an agent if you decide to go that route. Thanks everyone uh, and see you on the next video.